What's a moment in which you felt absolutely content? Like everything was perfect for just that one second. I yawned. Then my dog did too. So I scratched her ears and she made little contentment grunts. That was all I ever really wanted from life. Nearly 50 years ago I flew, for the first time, from New York to Minneapolis to begin graduate school. It was a night flight, all of $50 as I remember. As we passed over the lights of Milwaukee an incredible calm settled over me. I was embarking on real life and all was well. Probably back when I was about 15. I was at the beach with my girlfriend and we were wading in the water. The sky was extremely overcast. There were very few people on the beach. And as the rain started to come down really hard, even those few people left. It was one of those hard rains where each you can feel each and every heavy raindrop. We stayed in the water, even though it was probably a bit dangerous. We kissed one another, with the warm ocean water around us and the heavy raindrops splashing down. Everything just felt so very right. I remember one time many years ago it suddenly started snowing in the evening, which was a wonder in itself because it doesn't snow very often where I lived. I was sort of in a thoughtful mood, so sometime after midnight I bundled up and trekked across our yard and into the woods surrounding our house. I went all the way to this one isolated clearing that I used to play in a lot when I was a kid and just sat on a stump. It was dark and very quiet and I just watched the snow slowly drift down all around undoing even my freshly laid footsteps. It was a magical moment and I'll always remember it. Very magical. I can picture it now. Thank you for sharing that. I've had similar experiences too. Two years ago, I was having a horrible time in my life. Nothing was going right. I had family issues, medical issues and my job was unfulfilling. I coerced a close friend into going on a weekend road trip with me. We drove for hours, checked in at a motel, drank wine and beer, watched TV together, talked for hours and fell asleep early in the morning. We had to check out fairly early in the morning, too. Still, on the drive back home, sleep deprived, but having spent a day making a real, honest, human connection with someone else. I had this sense of calm wash over me that made me realize that the shittiness of the time I was having would pass and that I'd be alright again. Letter I wrote to an ex-girlfriend several years ago. Here's my favorite memory that took place with you and, likely, my favorite memory of all of my memories. It was the day you drove down to visit me in the Dells after we had recently broken up. I had worked 35 hours the previous 3 consecutive days. You arrived, and I got to introduce you to my friends. And then we went grocery shopping and came back to the apartment to make dinner and watch a movie. I am trying so hard to articulate the significance of that day to you, yet I am completely failing. Ever since I can remember, I have worried incessantly about finding a career that I enjoyed because I could not imagine going to work each day unhappy with it. But that one day with you, that single, bracketed 8 hours of time with you hit me over the head with this brick of clarity. That I was so content with spending the rest of my time with you that very little else mattered at all. I had an amazing family and an equally wonderful few friends. And you. Whether I disliked anything else would never have mattered again because, at the end of it, I would have been able to come home to you. Sweet. Funny. Beautiful. Loving. Wonderful you. That was it. After all of my worrying, job switching, moving, idle days, you made everything make sense and be okay. Better than okay. You were so young, and I was so naive to think that, at that point in time, it would all just magically work out. I am, more than you could believe, so sorry that you had to go through all that and that I wasn't responsible enough to think more with my head and less with my heart. I would never say that I wish I could go back and change any of it, but I'm still sorry. Additionally, I am sorry that I've allowed talks like this to go on for the past two years. There is no part of me anymore that wants, or believes we could, simply pick up where we left off. There's no part of me that thinks either of us could be the same people we were before. There is a large part of me, all of me, actually, that remembers exactly how it felt to love you so completely, though, and would always be willing to try it again from the beginning. Consequences thrown to the wind. I don't know what else to say. My contribution. I was seeing this girl I met in high school. She was the first girl I've ever decided that girl is cute, cool and interesting. I'm going to try and make something of it, we just went on a date and I was dropping her off at home. 
It was raining but I got out to walk her in. She stopped me on her driveway, turned, and kissed me. It was pouring rain and the moment our lips met lightning struck. Real close like so the flash and the sound were almost spot on. It felt like something out of a movie. One of the most perfect moments of my life. Lovely. Reminds me of once kissing a boy in his neighbor's pool. Under the stars. We were alone and had been flirting in the pool all night. His neighbor was inside watching TV. And we kept furtively glancing inside to make sure he couldn't see us and sneaking kisses. The pool was lit by only the moon. That boy and I don't talk anymore. But I'll never forget how that felt. Being the big spoon. Being the little spoon. Colon. The day I married my wife I felt invincible. I suffer from massive stage fright and on my wedding day I stood and spoke for 15 minutes in front of 150 people and it felt amazing. I have never felt such content to with whom I am as I did on my wedding day. I dream of this moment. I'm not gunning to get married anytime soon. But I am so excited for the moment I can stand in front of everyone who means something to me. There is only once in a person's life that he can get to everyone he loves in one place and say whatever he wants to them. And they will listen. As I type this, I am sitting my own girlfriend's bed. She is behind me looking over my shoulder probably wondering what the heck is going on and why I am such dork ignoring her to type on reddit. I've known her for 4 years but only online. We've talked a lot but I never really appreciated how much we really had in common and what an amazing person she really is. It wasn't until we both did a little growing up that I realized how head over heels in love with her I am. But by that time she was lined up to start college in NY. And I was headed off to boot camp. Now I am stationed near Charleston. A few days ago I put on my dress uniform and flew up here to be greeted by my girl and her mother. Every minute since then has been better than the last. We laughed. Giggle, smiles, made love, and traveled around an area that has more to offer than I could have ever imagined. I sat down for Thanksgiving dinner with her family, a large love Italian family that may be loud but you sense how much everyone really cares for each other, something I had never experienced before. She's given me the greatest holiday I could have ever hoped for and right now, sitting on her girly floral print comforter typing away on this MacBook and she argues with her dad about a shirt. I feel at home. I feel loved. I feel things I have never felt before. And I don't regret a single thing. Please let her read this. I have the same feeling when I am about to sleep with an open window and the sound of the rain or the wind in the trees. Wonder where does it come from? The clouds in the sky, usually. One day, I was lost in the city. I didn't have my phone so I couldn't call my parents or anyone else to ask how I was getting home. This was about 2 years ago so I was really only 13 and didn't know my way around the city at that time. I was feeling really depressed at the time and had no idea what to do. After a long period of thoughts filled with anxiety and sadness, my mind started to open up. I began to really start thinking. I looked at all the people in the city walking. Everybody had their own unique way of walking. Some people were listening to music and therefore walked to the beat of the music. But of course even that changed with the different types of music they were listening to. Some people were walking in step with their friends and acquaintances. Some people in a hurry walked considerably fast. I walked slow. I started to think about how each person had their own individual story. I was truly fascinated by all this, even more fascinated than an LSD user would be if they looked in a mirror. I thought about the opening lyrics to the Nine Inch Nails song All the Love in the World. Watching all the insects march along, seemed to know just right where they belong. Everybody had a place to be. There were so many people each with their own story. I started to picture words attached to each person. I kept on adding more words. Stupid and random words such as this guy drank one time at a party and regretted it. Each person had so many words attached to them. But these words were more words than I could ever create. I suddenly had a simple epiphany. People are complex. It is impossible to attach a few words to someone and have those words describe exactly, or mark the boundaries of, the character of that person. Everybody I saw in the city was complex. I fully understood that there were other people in this world. Many people. After realizing this, I felt absolutely content. I get this rush whenever I quit a job. I also experience the same sensation after taking the last final of the semester. A clean slate and a fresh start. 
As a child, I used to be very emotionally volatile. When I was very upset, my mother would hold my hand very gently and say Austin, it will be okay. Tomorrow is a new day. My mother died this past April. I'm 19 and in college, and this past semester I have done both full-time work and full-time school. On top of that I've frequently been wondering if I'm actually worth anything. Well-known existential crisis. When I'm worried, I can invoke the feeling of her hand with mine and recite those words. It helps me feel better, and I know while the world is a fricked up place, there are many tomorrows to be had, and people to still be happy with. It makes me happy with myself, if only for a split second. My only hope is that memory never fades. It now lives forever through the internet. D. I was snowed in while staying in a little tiny town in Switzerland. We had plenty of food and hot chocolate, and I had absolutely nothing stressing me out. So we jumped off the balcony into the powder and tunneled our way to the nearest road and went skiing. I definitely feel at peace after a long snowstorm early in the morning. It's always so quiet out. Feels like everything has just stopped. I once spent an entire night wide awake in a forest, with only a mat to sit on. I walked my dog in the late evening, on a long lonely path away from the city small suburb towards a river. There were two large empty fields toward each side of me. The sky was dark on one side, and deep orange on the other. I was standing in awe for around 10 minutes. Well, 5. My dog got pee at me. That really rings true. So many times I have wanted to pause in a moment, only for my dog to say hey man come on, crap to smell, I guess he has a point. My first serious relationship, we were sitting in her room after class bullshitting and the conversation had stalled. I asked her to tell me something interesting and she paused, thinking about it, and responded with I love you. It was one of the most perfect moments of my life, even now, almost 6 years hence. After everything has fallen apart, in rather ugly fashion, I still look back on this and appreciate it. Not because I hold some fleeting hope for anything from her, but because, at least for a while, there was someone like this in my life who felt this way for me. Made me think of my ex. What hurts the most is the fact that I don't have her anymore. I especially miss the way she turn her head in just the perfect angle and tell me I love you. It felt so real, at least until she married my boss who is 20 years older than her. My second year of college I was getting ready to go out on a Saturday night, and was sitting on the edge of my bed playing the level of Tomb Raider 2 where you are under the sea in a cave or something. Had a cold beer, and for about 20 minutes I was completely happy. I don't even know why, but everything was perfect at that moment. Cool thread idea. BTW. Now I'm happy thinking about that. Thunderstorms. Sighting on the toilet with a coffee, a cigarette and the latest copy of my favorite computer mag and then realizing that it has just the perfect viscosity. Coffee and cigs. No enema could ever beat that. In the summer after senior year of high school I went out to a friend's island with a group of people. We drank ourselves silly at night and slept in her cabin. We woke up to a beautiful warm sunny morning and all ended up down in the bay. The coast of Maine, if you've never been is extremely rocky and lined with pine trees and seaweed and the water is cold. We spent the morning swimming and playing with boats in the water, being with my best friends. Graduated from high school, after a great night, swimming in the ocean surrounded by this beautiful, rough, wild terrain on a beautiful day I felt perfectly content. Then I broke out in itchy spots from hooking up with a girl on a picnic table covered in brown tail moth and had to tell my parents I was out drinking and what happened. But while we were swimming it was awesome. Singing American Pie with more than 500,000 strangers on the lawn of the Washington Mall during Obama's inaugural concert. Say what you will about his presidency, or him, or what you think the state of America is, at the moment, everyone on that lawn felt like everything was going to be alright. When I ski, the speed is incredible. Snow is incredible. Mountains are incredible. The very first time I snowboarded, I happened to be the last on the slope. I decided to stop and sit down. I felt so happy that snowboarding had come so naturally to me. I could clearly see a lake and the streaks of sunlight above me as the sun set. It was absolutely perfect. I had just gotten out of a relationship and everything in my city reminded me of her. So, I flew out to Canada to visit a friend in Vancouver. 
he had class so I had opted to kinda explore the city. It was rainy that day, I had my headphone just playing some song and walking around the city. It nice being somewhere where nobody knew who I was and I was a stranger among the crowd. It felt so liberating from all of my attachments. Did this in Miami. I got a 6 figure bonus check once after 4-5 years of really hard work. With that check I paid off my home and that was one of those times when I knew things would not be the same. That peace in my life was now possible. Drudging out into the middle of a snow covered, frozen lake or pond in the middle of January here in Minnesota. Then laying down and staring. Just staring up into the unlight polluted sky. Seeing all of the stars. And the only sound being your own breathing. Maybe a wild animal. And if it's a clouded, snowy night. The snow gently landing on the ground ice. Barely audible but comforting. It's a moment I can recreate. And it reminds me that I'm a part of everything. Even if it's on such a tiny scale someone else on the other side of the planet will never know. But it brings inspiration, joy, sadness, love and sometimes depression. All at once. But I always end up ecstatic after it. Call it. Meditation. I landed an internship with Google in Newport, California, Irvine. And on the plane to Mountain View, training, I was opening a present that my girlfriend made me. I chased after that girl for about a year and when we finally got together I got this job across the Atlantic for 6 months. In amongst all of the random, awesome, crap she sent me was a note to say she was taking a month out to come live with me next to the beach there. Still with her, still with Google. Hope to top that moment but I'm pretty happy with it being the best one if it doesn't happen. Dang. I'm jealous right now. Ecstasy. Only it usually lasts for longer than a few seconds. Smoking a cigarette in bed with my ex-girlfriend. After fricking on E after leaving a justice show. She said if this isn't nice. I don't know what is and I considered asking asking her to marry me. Good thing I didn't. That's the real danger of drugs. I get random bouts of euphoria for no apparent reason. Kinda makes me worry I'm going insane. But also feels great. The day my husband walked out of my life. It was the most intense feeling. I was finally able to breathe again. My best friend. Now boyfriend. P. Walked in my house at 2am and told my then husband to pack his things and leave. There were words of course. But eventually he left. Seeing him drive away was so emotional. But not in a sad way. I never have to fear being beat anymore. I can finally sleep soundly. I never have to look over my shoulder wondering if he is behind me or following me while driving. I am at peace now. I now know what real love is. I love you goatee 2007. D. There's lots of times like this. But I will only list one. Back in 2001. During November I was down at Fort Benning. We were at the known distance rifle range. I was in the middle of a field tens of times larger than a football field. The temperature was perfect. I looked up and the sky was the most amazing shade of blue. There weren't any clouds. I could have lived that moment forever. And it felt like I spent a lifetime taking it all in. Whenever I'm outside while it's snowing. Falling snow is unbelievably beautiful. I've always thought this. After being on the receiving end of a breakup for the first time, I walked outside into a beautiful snowfall. It was quite cathartic. My junior year in high school, I threw a no-hitter in a conference game. Fairly awesome baseball feat. The last out was a ground ball to my first baseman. And I remember being right there to cover first in case he couldn't get to the bag in time. And then just kind of being in disbelief, acting like nothing special happened. But then everyone sorta dogpiled me and the full realization came on. Then later that night, 3 to 4 AM, I got 7th place clanless in an online game that lasts for about 2-3 months, War of Empires. That was the second best clanless finish of all time, so I was pretty proud of myself at the time. But then the next day at school, people were congratulating me for the no hitter. I got dragged into the dean's office and I was thinking oh no, what did I do but then I got congratulated and we talked about college and stuff. Other time was when I asked a girl to prom. Mind you, I didn't, don't, have the best social skills this side of the Mississippi. So we didn't really talk much except on AIM. My name is Charlie, and this was when Charlie the Unicorn was really popular. 
I made a unicorn out of paper with a speech bubble to ask her to prom, and put it in her locker before school. I didn't see her till between 3rd and 4th period, when I was sitting in the senior pod, where the seniors hang out do homework. A bunch of people told me that my ask was awesome, and then she got there and said yes, and all my friends couldn't believe I had the balls to do that. Then my friends all high-fived me a bunch, and one of them was trying to treat me like a king, holding doors and the like. She was really hot. The only other time was my fourth date with the only girl I've ever really dated. I was sitting in a big tire at a park with her on my lap after a bit of a makiot session. It was just kind of serene. I felt like I wasn't alone for a change. Gah. This moment is now ruined in memory though because I notice how horribly shy and confident I was then. It makes it difficult to write about. Sounds like you are a bit of a Casanova. Don't think about it too much and you'll be bloody sweet. On a 14 day kayaking trip this summer, 16, in Georgian Bay, look it up if you want to know more about it, and someone in our group gets a fairly mild case of hypothermia even though it's mild, we get set back a few hours, we start paddling again at dusk, and we begin to make a very big open water crossing to that day's destination, as I'm paddling, at first I feel pretty crappy because we just got wet again after a few hours of being dry, but then as we paddled on I looked up, I saw the most amazing sky I have ever seen in my life. Behind us, the sun had set, and in front of us, it was still setting. The entire sky flawlessly melted into itself from a deep purple behind us into a beautiful inferno of orange light in front of us. The light was reflecting off the water in a cascade of glimmers that became duller as we passed them, and as the sun continued to set. I stopped paddling and all nothing I have ever seen has ever rivaled the beauty of that paddle, and it is one of the very few times I have ever felt completely at peace. I think I will remember that moment forever, seeing the most immaculate sunset untouched by human pollution, both the waste kind and the light kind, and that picture painted by the light on the watery canvas of the lake. I dropped acid at university with a girl I was truly in love with. It was a sunny summer afternoon and we walked through a field of wheat till we were looking over some water. And we stared at each other as we peeked and cartoon animations of love filled my peripheral vision. Red hearts and growing roses grew and were replaced as my mind tried to express the perfection of the moment through the drug. That was my moment. I have a best day too and a best weekend and a best week and a best month and a best year. But that was my best moment for sure. When I was having a warm cup of coffee on a cold winter day with a girl I love, talking about things we know we'll never do but just enjoying hearing the other person talk, we were so shy and afraid to tell each other how we felt but we both knew. Sometimes those knowing glances and the little side comments tell you more than honesty ever will. I was in college laying on my first real girlfriend's couch, she came into the room looked at me, smiled, then laid flat on me and fell dead asleep for an hour or more. It's been several years and several loves later and nothing tops it, young love still trumps the heart. This is what taking mushrooms makes me feel like, well actually, it's an intense calm and understanding for like a minute, followed by like a minute of absolute awe for how crazy everything is, then a brief bit of panic about all the bad crap I've ever done, followed by an intense calm and understanding, repeat for like 6 hours, I love mushrooms. Como I believe tonight the world is in the most peaceful state possible. The heavy rain that persisted throughout the day held everything living at bay from venturing out into the world. The rain has now ended and a fog thicker than any other rests on the earth, acting as a shield to all but the sounds of one's own footsteps in the halos of street lamps. No wind stirs the leaves so recently fallen, no being, whether human, insect, leaf, or even the earth itself, dares to disturb the transcendent silence which outweighs all of existence, and another one, also similar, comma occasionally, I come to the realization that I am alive, I feel an immense sense of freedom and possibility, and disregard, I slam on the acceleration pedal with my arm out the window and the wind dancing in my fingers, or I take a deep breath of the cool night air, bringing myself to a full consciousness and harmony of my senses. At these points in time, life is an entirely physical entity. I can feel the essence of life in my hands, as I grip it, and claim it as my own, swearing to it that I will never let it go. I can feel it coursing through my veins, pumping and beating with the most primal and natural tick, tuck, 
reminding me that nothing lasts forever. I think there's something especially profound in silence that follows heavy rain or a storm. Nothing is quieter than the morning after a blizzard. I love stepping out into the absolute calm and leaving the first footprints in the snow. I thought it was abnormal to have sentiment feelings about what we stare at, but thank you everyone for making it a common thing. One of my moments when I felt absolutely content is when I was on a plane for my second time. What made this plane ride so special is that my first time in a plane was when I was an infant, so I would have no memories about it. Anyways, the second plane trip was a night flight going to New York from Los Angeles. I was sitting on the window side next to my mom, and I would just stare down out the window. It was a blissful moment because the plane was flying over many cities, and it was really bright. Not only were the city lights captivating my eyes but also the fluffy looking clouds that the plane was flying through. It was such a marvelous sight that I ignored the movie that the flight attendants put on. The movie was triple x staring ice cube, so it is definitely worth missing out on to watch the clouds and city lights. Handing in my very last piece of coursework at university and knowing that it was all done. Beaten by putting my pen down in my final exam of university, I finished reasonably early like always. Packed up, handed it in, walked through the door and I guess everyone in the exam hall heard me shouting woohoo. Being finished was brilliant. Now that there are 900 comments I doubt anyone will see this. But after I started work my dad and I met in a pub and sat in a booth towards the back. It was an English style pub where everything was made out of old wood with very large sturdy furniture. We started drinking our beers and talking and then started up a game of cribbage on his brass and hardwood travel board. I remember sitting there about halfway through the game, having a jovial conversation with my father, who is not wordy by any means. He's extremely reserved, and thinking you know what, this is all right. When I'm on MDMA. Sadly people don't know what MDMA is anymore. E is a rim riddle drug that has barely any MDMA in it. Cold room with lots of warm covers, it's magic. Until you have to get out of bed. As sappy as it sounds, holding my daughter for the first time, when I looked at her I was overwhelmed with love, lying in the hospital bed with my husband next to me and my newborn in my arms. I can't explain the level of happiness I felt. It's the most amazing feeling in the world. Whenever I'm DJing to a full dance floor or whenever one of my tunes gets signed to a decent label, a feeling of accomplishment, happiness and a little pride I have never matched with anything else. You have been visited by the fashion doggo comment your envy strengthens me so you always look beautiful. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.